Hello, I'm Elijah from Cryptid Studies Institute, and today we are bringing you something entirely different. We are constantly trying to bring you a little research, true cryptid accounts, histories, mysteries, strange personal accounts, as well as on-site cryptid reports with our nightmare nuggets, interviews, legends and lore from Appalachia and other regions, and any other thing that we can do to serve you guys. And in the future, we have some other things going on that we hope you'll enjoy. We'll be setting up at the Cryptid Con in Lexington, Kentucky this December, Lord willing and the creek don't rise. And I cannot praise the Kirklands enough for this great show that they put on. Also, unless disaster strikes, we hope to be hosting our own con in May 2021. More to come on that. And we have a couple of unique cryptid outings planned that we hope you'll enjoy, where we will actually go to an active area, and other than our camera and recording gear, we will only use equipment that existed a hundred years ago, such as torches, carbide lamps, etc. We'll also be doing a Dollar Tree $10 outing, where my dad and I can only spend $10 each on equipment, and we cannot bring anything with us but the 10 items and our recording equipment. And don't worry, these will be serious outings, doing real respectful research. People a hundred years ago had encounters, and we want to experience this too, as it will help us to get a feel for what life may have been like for those who had encounters before the advent of modern technology and heavy personal safety devices. We've been asked to do a couple of videos on our favorite cryptid books, both research and casual reading such as novels, but what we want to bring you this week is something that my dad and my sister have been working on for quite a while. Over the last couple of years, they've written what some people have called a ghastly masterpiece. And it is a book of short stories that they had planned to release as standalone kid slash teen books. But after the stories were complete, it seemed that more adults were interested in the books, so they decided to combine them as one larger volume. They recently got these works copywritten and hoped to self-publish them later this year. But until then, we thought that we'd have a little fun and release one story online every week for free because we're so grateful for the love that you've shown us. We don't consider this creepy pasta or anything exactly like that. Imagine, if you will, a dark, twisted Dr. Seuss. And they've been very well received from those who have seen and heard them. My dad and sister loosely based some of them on tales of creatures and critters that he heard tales of growing up. And their undying love for the universal monsters like Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and the Phantom of the Opera. And they threw in a homage to characters as a nod to Halloween, Gremlins, and the Fog, and set the stories in a fictional little mountain town patterned after the people and places of Ray County, Tennessee. The names have been changed, but if you live there, you would probably recognize the places. Every story is, as I said, a standalone story, but each story overlaps some other story in the series, or starts a thread that carries on later, so people, places, and phrases will reappear. I would like to remind everyone, however, that these stories are not true, and there should be no way to misconstrue them as true, but you never know, some people just don't pay attention. If this is not your thing, please be kind, as some people do wish to hear them. Well, I've rambled on long enough. Please enjoy our new weekly series that we call Tales from the Holler. First up, Claude Hopper. In the forest surrounding our mountaintop home, where the deer and the wolves and the black bears do roam. A creature exists of a terrible shape, with humongous feet, half man and half ape. This beastie resides down in old brogy holler, in the stinking mud pits where the boars go to waller. He's monstrously big, like a giant grizzle bear. From his head to his toes he is covered in hair, blacker than pitch and thick as molasses, striking fear and a dread into all of the masses. This creature is simply called the Clod Hopper, and across paths with him could be a heart stopper. He comes out by night, stalking the land, to find him a meal, be it livestock or man. His smell is disgusting, like grave dirt and fish, or some kind of roadkill a wagon is squished. When he roams about, the forest falls silent, not a critter will stir, cause he's vicious and violent. This cannibal creature will catch you alone. He'll chew off your flesh and he'll gnaw on your bones. He'll swallow you down like a piece of fat back. That's exactly what happened to my third cousin Jack. It was Halloween day when Jack met his fate. 
at the hands of the beast with its apish-like gait. Jack was out digging taters with Cletus McSween when they were both boys about seventeen. It was just about dark and they were digging like crazy because Cletus is planning to go courting with Daisy, the girl who lived just a small ways down the road, not far from the pond where the bullfrogs abode. He needed to meet her, perhaps at 6.30, and he needed to wash because he stunk and was dirty. So they dug in a frenzy, like a couple machines, my third cousin Jack and Cletus McSween. They were putting their treasure of spuds in a sack, and that's when the clodhopper launched his attack. A rock came a-flying and struck Cletus's head. It knocked him plumb out and left him for dead. When Cletus woke up, well, Jack, he was gone, and the taters and Cletus were there all alone. There was nothing but taters and burlap and blood, and some gigantic footprints left there in the mud. This happened many a year in the past, but my third cousin victim would not be his last. He came and stole hogs from the old Dotty farm and tore off my great uncle Ferris's arm. He's killed and he's plundered and stolen livestock and beat Bobby Gentry to death with a rock. He roars in the night, he whoops and he howls makes blood-chilling shrieks and deep-throated growls. He's a shadow of death, this fur-pelted demon, and if he finds you at night, you will soon be a-screamin'. The clodhopper said to be nine feet or taller. He's a killer for sure, this ape-mannish brawler. The hulking behemoth's still seen now and then, out in a swamp with his kith and his kin, a family of cannibals, apish like brutes, covered with fur and their bone-grinding tooths. Stay out of his swamp and be home before dark, or this beastie will surely tear you all apart. Your number is up, you can bet your last dollar, if Clodhopper finds you an old brogy holler.